Okay, good morning YouTube. Uh, today is June the 8th, 2022. I wanted to do a real quick video on this Aeromotive fuel pressure regulator, specifically if you're using it on your Yamaha YXE 1000R side-by-side. -side. Um, we're gonna, this one's taken apart. We're gonna talk about how this thing works and you know why I don't think this is a great choice. Um, and then I'm gonna give you some alternatives of some stuff we've been doing that works better. Um, first, we'll talk about the functionality of a fuel pressure regulator, specifically this Aeromotive, and we'll show you how it works real quick. And you have this base housing, um, port coming out of the bottom is your return back to your tank. Port coming in the side is your um, fuel leaving the fuel rail. And inside, you know, you can see it's just a, a little pocket in there. Essentially, the fuel comes in here and fills up this housing. And then there's a, a hole to your return line back to your tank, which is blocked off by this steel ball bearing um, on the bottom side of this diaphragm. So the more pressure you're applying to this assembly, the more you're blocking this hole off. And that's what uh, regulates the fuel pressure. Um, the rest of this assembly, we got a top housing with an adjustment screw um, that has your pressure reference port in the side. Inside that is this coil spring and there's a spring seat on top of there. That's what the screw is pushing against to add pressure to this spring. The spring sits on this aluminum spring seat on the top of this diaphragm, pushes down on the diaphragm and jams that steel ball bearing into that hole, or onto that hole, I should say, to regulate the fuel pressure. Um, <clears throat> your base pressure is set by the spring tension, so how hard you're pushing down on it, just spring only. How much you're blocking this hole off that's where you're going to set your initial base pressure um, say 50 psi or whatever you set it up for and then that's where this pressure port comes into play so as the car starts to build some boost you got pressure air pressure coming in here filling up the inside of this housing which is then you know pushing against the top side of this diaphragm and adding that much more force to you know on the same side with this spring to the ball to block off that hole further which increases the fuel pressure um, <clears throat> that's important on a turbocharged vehicle because you need to raise the fuel pressure uh, these are one to one so one psi of fuel pressure increase for every one psi of boost pressure reasoning for that is you want to maintain that um, outlet pressure of the injector into the intake manifold, which you know equates into the fuel flow itself. So as you are creating back pressure on the outlet of the injector, meaning you're pressurizing your intake manifold, you need to increase the fuel pressure in order to maintain the same flow rate. And that's why these regulators are crucial. Um, not crucial, I'm not, I'm not gonna say everybody has to have this set up. Um, typical application, for instance, might be like a real low pressure turbo setup, you know, that you've tuned with a power commander or something. You can tune around the loss of volume coming out of the injector due to the intake manifold pressure increase by increasing the injector duty cycle, meaning, you know, you're, you're flowing more fuel um, in order for it to maintain, you know, whatever that required fuel amount is into the intake manifold. And you can do that at low boost. Um, that does work. So if you have your car set up that way, I'm not going to tell you it's not going to work. Um, this is more, more, uh, specific for somebody that's going to run more boost, like, uh, you know, maybe above 10 PSI a boost or something. This is where you really start considering a rising rate regulator now if you're high boost uh, you know 15 psi or above um, this is critical you have to have this uh, otherwise it just doesn't work um, this plays a pretty big role in your tune so meaning you know you, you have to maintain that base pressure or that differential pressure has to be constant because that's going to really have a drastic effect on 
um, your air fuel ratios and your fuel mapping, you know, as you get up into that higher boost pressure. Um, I bring that topic up because if you have one of these regulators and it doesn't function correctly or it's failing, um, in my instance, two cars on the dyno, two different times with a bad aeromotive regulator, you know, you spend a few hours doing your heart throttle and, you know, all your up to boost tuning on this vehicle. And then you start getting into some boost and all of a sudden you go, well, my differential pressure is, you know, falling off or it's going to nothing and I'm running out of fuel. Um, and you trace it down to this regulator being bad and essentially all that work you did up to that point is null and void. You know, you're going to fix this regulator and you're going to start over. So it's very inconvenient. Um, in a lot of instances, that would be very expensive because you've used up a bunch of time of, you know, somebody that's tuning your vehicle or hours on the dyno. You know, you're not going to get that money back if you get into this problem. And a lot of times you've waited, you know, a month or two months or longer to have this dyno appointment. So this is one of those things that needs to be... Um, carefully looked at and make sure you have this working, you know, long before you get into that situation. Easiest way to do that is to not buy an aeromotive regulator for your Yamaha side-by-side. -side. You know, this is a mini regulator. I think I said the part number on this one's 13136. Um, all of these mini aeromotive regulators work the same way. Um, <clears throat> now let's talk about mechanical design of this thing and why it's not very good. Um, this, these regulators are not inexpensive, so you're still paying 150 to two and a quarter to get one of these regulators, depending on who you get it through. Um, it's this, you know, this aluminum, soft aluminum base with this hole in it. Now, this is the one that came off our shop car, and this thing has failed. Um, you can see, if you look at this ball seat, it is absolutely just beat to heck. You know, and it's not round and it's smashed out um, from this hard steel ball bearing that's in here pushing against it or beating on it. Um, premature wear and failure, you know, this thing's a few hundred miles old. Um, you know, and we're lucky with the MoTeC engine management stuff on the car and a lot of safety that this didn't cause us any problems. This basically just turned into a loss of power. Um, if you had done this on different vehicle you know that's making some good power with maybe a power commander or something you know and you start losing your differential pressure like this the car is going to go lean and you're going to blow the engine up if you're not paying attention to it so you know another reason not to use this it's not safe um reason number three is this design with a diaphragm that is the only barrier between the fuel and your pressure port or your vacuum port is that if something goes wrong with this diaphragm this thing gets a tear in it something happens all of a sudden you have you know pressurized fuel going to this vacuum port um, if you're lucky it will kill the car because it'll go so fat all of a sudden that it'll just shut down if you're not lucky you'll hydrolock uh, a cylinder because that's quite a bit of fuel coming out of there um, and again that will cost you your motor it's one of those things that might happen uh, in the not most opportune time, like maybe you're drag racing somebody or something, you're not paying attention to the vehicle, you're paying attention to whatever the activity is. This thing fails and then, you know, all of a sudden you've, you've lost your motor. So, um, bad design, you know, poor, cheap quality uh, design. Um, you're paying big money for the name and you're not getting a quality product so that's why i wanted to do this video i have this talk with you guys over the phone um often uh, a couple times a week you know comes up a regulator or problem with a regulator i've had customers that have had problems with these regulators my recommendation is a regulator from a company called four innovations um i'm not endorsed by them it's just what we've been using and having good luck with I don't have one here to show you, but I'll probably do another video with one eventually. That has a hardened um, stainless steel valve seat. So it actually has a valve seat in here, you know, that's pressed in. And then it has a ceramic ball bearing. Um, so, you know, the seat's never gonna go bad on you. The biggest uh, other difference is, is this diaphragm, you know, it has like a rod coming off of it and that rod goes through an O-ring seal 
and then down into the fuel housing. So your vacuum circuit, diaphragm circuit, and your fuel are always separated. You're never in a situation where this fails and you know takes your motor out. Um, I will put a link to that particular regulator in this description. Um, other good alternatives, Turbo Smart makes a great fuel pressure regulator, same uh, same style of construction with a separated diaphragm. Um, Radium has some great stuff. You know, pretty much anything uh, besides this air motive is going to be doing yourself a favor. If, I'm, if you're watching this video and you got one of these air motives brand new in a box, you're getting ready to put it on your car, um, do yourself a favor and get, you know, put that thing on eBay or Marketplace or something, get rid of it and get something better. The 4 Innovations Regulator is literally the same price as this air motive. So if you don't own one yet, buy that one instead. Um, it's going to do a lot better for you. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to put that out there. You know, we've been talking a lot about fuel system stuff. I know this video is boring because we're just staring at a dismantled regulator here. Um, but I'm just trying to get the information out there and save you guys some headache. Um, which this is a lot of headache if, uh, if you're in this situation. Especially on the dyno or, you know, worse than that, you blow up your $10,000 engine build or something because of this poorly made part. Um, anyway, hopefully that's good information. Uh, hopefully we've kind of explained why, you know, the, how this works and why it fails. And I hope, hope it's good for you. So thanks guys. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.